Well, good morning, everyone. Again, we welcome you. And uh, unfortunately, as we all realize, we're in red phase again, but we're praying for you and so glad that you joined with us in worship this morning. And we invite you, amidst our circumstances and our situations, to just try this morning to set aside all distractions and to just focus and worship Him. So again, as we come this morning to worship Him, let's just look to Him and uh, may you sense and know His presence in a powerful way. Let's pray and ask God's blessing on this time. Father God, again, we thank you that no matter where we are, no matter who we are, God, you meet us exactly where we are. And so I pray this morning that you would just comfort those that need to be comforted, you would encourage those that need to be encouraged, that you would challenge those that need to be challenged. And God, I just pray that you would have your will in our lives, your will be done. And so, God, I just pray as we come together, even through online, we just pray that we would worship you. I pray as the worship team leads us this morning in worship, that we would again be able to set aside all distractions and just focus upon you and worship you, because in your presence is fullness of joy. So we just welcome your presence today. In Jesus' name. Good morning, FBC. We're so thankful that you're joining us online this morning. We just have a few announcements uh, that we want to go through before we worship together. Um, as you may have heard or may not have heard, um, Brittany will no longer be our uh, secretary in the office here as of when? February, February 8th. February 8th. We're going to miss her. That being said, we are looking for some new office administration. So uh, if you are interested in that position, uh, please send your resume to the church office or the church email, salisburybaptistc at gmail.com. Uh, the office hours for this week are Wednesday to Friday from 8.30 to 12, and they will be returning to the regular hours the following week. And lastly, you can bring your offering to the office anytime um, the office is open. So, let's worship together. <laughs>
12 to 17. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony, and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace, and always be thankful. Let the message about Christ and all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives you. Sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father.
again, I just want to thank the worship team for leading us in worship today. And uh, before we look to God's Word, we're going to look to Him in prayer. But before we do that, I was reading this week a little humor for you as we begin. A woman had just returned to her home from an evening of church services when she was startled by an intruder. She caught the man in the act of robbing her home of its valuables, and she yelled, Stop! Acts 2.38! Which, for those of you that don't know, Acts 2.38 says, Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven. But she just yelled out, Acts 2.38! The burglar stopped in his tracks. The woman calmly called the police and explained what she had done. As the officer cuffed the man to take him in, he asked the burglar, why did you just stand there? All the old lady did was yell a scripture to you. Scripture, replied the burglar. She said she had an axe and two thirty-eights. Knowing scripture can save your life in more ways than one. So this morning, again, as we look to God's word, and I want us to continue on a series we've been looking at and how God tells us to love or to treat one another. And this morning, I want us to particularly look at how can I forgive? Uh, last week, we looked at the fact that God tells us, commands us to forgive one another. And we may know that we should forgive one another, but forgiving one another is not always easy to do. In fact, it can be very, very difficult to do. Almost sometimes seem impossible to do. Yet God tells us to forgive one another. That if we are going to love God and have a vibrant, thriving relationship with God, it is vital that we learn to forgive one another. But a valid question is how? How can I forgive one another? How can I forgive someone that has so wronged me, so hurt me? I know I need to forgive, but how can I forgive? So I want us to look at that this morning. But before we do so, again, let's look to God in prayer. I want you to know that I pray for you. I go through our uh, directory each week and I pray for those uh, that are part of our church family. I pray for our community. And I want you to know if there's something particular I can pray for, be sure to contact me, send me an email, send me a message, and I will be sure to pray for you. And if there's anything I can do, please do not hesitate to contact me. Again, as we look to God's word this morning, let's look to him in prayer. Let's pray. Father God, again, I thank you for you, that you never change. God, we are living in a time where we realize there is so much uncertainty. God, we don't know from one day to the next even what phase we will be in. We can plan all we want to plan, and yet we realize that even though we plan all we want, God, things are subject to change. And I thank you for your word, that your word says, though a man's heart plans his way, the Lord directs his steps. And so I thank you, no matter what circumstance, no matter what situation we find ourselves in, that you never change. You were the same yesterday, today, and forever. So that we can trust you in every circumstance, in every situation. So God, my prayer for myself is that I would learn to trust you more and more each day. No matter what circumstance I find myself in, no matter what I will face, pray that I will learn to trust you. And I pray for each and every one that's tuning in by way of online today. I pray that no matter where they find themselves in life, that they will learn to trust you. God, as your word says, what's required of a steward is to be found faithful. So I pray amidst our circumstances and situations, we would be faithful. We would trust you. That even in our conversation with others, God, they would realize that we are ones who trust you amidst our circumstance. I pray for those that are going through times of sickness, through illness. I pray your hand of healing upon them, your comfort. For those that are mourning the loss of loved ones. Even all the more, I'm sure, difficult in these times. As for many, it's even difficult or impossible to even get together with loved ones or family. And so I pray your comfort and your peace upon each and every one. And I pray now that your Holy Spirit would empower me, would fill me, because I recognize and realize without you, I can do nothing. So I need you. And so I pray as we look to your word again, you will speak. 
but give us ears to hear and a heart to receive what you would have for us today. So God, again, I pray your comfort, your peace upon each one. Bless this time, I pray, for it's in Jesus' name we have it. I ask, amen. Last week, we looked at the whole matter of the fact that God tells us to forgive one another. That if we are going to love God, as God tells us in Matthew chapter 22, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. And likewise, the second commandment is to love our neighbor as ourself. And God commands us to love one another, and to love one another means we are going to need to forgive one another. And God commands us to forgive one another. But again, as I said, forgiveness is not easy. In fact, sometimes it can be harder than other times. If we base forgiveness on deserving it, we will have a very, very difficult time, if not impossible, to forgive others. I'll say that again. If we base forgiveness on deserving it, so if I base me forgiving someone on the fact that they deserve it, I will have a very, very difficult time, if not impossible time, in forgiving someone else. Forgiveness is not based upon deserving it. Forgiveness is based upon grace. It's giving someone what they don't deserve. It's based upon mercy of not giving someone what they do deserve. And so if we base forgiveness on deserving it, we will have a very, very difficult time in forgiving and the reason we find it hard to forgive not, may not be so much due to our relationship with the person who offended us, but our relationship with God. And again, as I began this series, I said, really, they are intertwined. They're interchangeable. Our relationship with God is vital to our relationship with one another. If we have a healthy, vibrant, growing, thriving relationship with God, we will have vibrant relationships with one another. We will have healthy relationships with one another. It doesn't always mean everyone will like us, but we will love one another. We will do what God has called us to do. I can't control what others do. I can only learn to control what I do, and that is a full-time job. But the reason we find it hard to forgive may not be so much due to our relationship with the person who offended us, but with our relationship with God. And if we, if I, have a proper understanding of how God deals with me, of how God deals with you, then we will know how to relate to those who have wronged us. Most of us, if not all of us, know what is known as the golden rule. The golden rule is actually found in God's word. In, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, Jesus says this, Do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and prophets. We call it the golden rule. And most people, if not all people, even that don't have any church affiliation, most people know what we call the golden rule. Well, the golden rule is found in God's word. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, do unto others as you would do unto do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. So, in other words, we can say this: just as we would want forgiveness, we need to forgive others. Just as I need forgiveness, at times others need forgiveness. And just as I would want people to extend forgiveness to me, so I ought to extend forgiveness to others. Again, I can only speak for myself, but I stand here this morning and I acknowledge there are many times in my life where I have needed forgiveness. I have needed God's forgiveness, and yes, at times I have needed forgiveness of others. And I thank God that if people, for people that have been able to forgive me, and just as I have wanted other people to forgive me, so I need to forgive others. I want us to look this morning in Matthew chapter 8 because I believe this really Jesus teaches us not only to forgive, but I believe it's a principle here of how we can forgive. Because again, forgiveness is not easy. And at times it can be more difficult than at other times. Sometimes there are some people that are easier to forgive than others. Sometimes people do things to us that may be easier to forgive than other things they may do. So I want this morning to look at a principle I believe Jesus teaches in Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 down to verse 35. 
and how we can love, treat one another, and how can I forgive? Yes, even when it is difficult. In Matthew chapter 18, beginning of verse 21, it says, Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive? Someone who sins against me, someone who wrongs me, someone who hurts me. Peter asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive someone? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. Now it's important to understand in the context of this, when Peter asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive someone? And here we see Peter says seven times. For Peter, when he expressed that, I believe Peter was going above and beyond. He was saying seven times because under Jewish custom, rabbis taught that people should forgive those who offend them, but only three times. So it was taught by the rabbis, by the religious leaders of that day, that when someone wronged you, you should forgive them, but only three times. So Peter here is going above and beyond. He more than doubles that. He says, Lord, how many times should I forgive someone? Seven times? And Jesus replied, no, not seven times, but 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of his debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. And he couldn't pay. So his master ordered that he be sold along with his wife, his children, and everything he owed to pay the debt. But the man fell down before his master and begged him, pleaded with him, begged him, please be patient with me and I will pay it all. Then his master was filled with pity for him, and he released him and forgave his debt. Again, understanding in those times, in those days, in biblical times, there were serious consequences awaited those who could not pay their debts. So Peter understood the context of what Jesus was teaching here in this parable, of this person who had a debt and couldn't pay it. Peter understood what the consequences of that day were for someone who owed a debt and could not pay their debt. In Bible times, serious consequences awaited those who couldn't pay their debts. A person lending the money could seize the borrowers, could seize the borrower who couldn't pay and force him or his family to work until his debt was paid. So he could literally seize him, demand that he worked for him, that he worked for him until his debt was paid off. Or the debtor could also be thrown into prison, or his family could be sold into slavery to help pay off the debt. So again, Peter understood the context of what Jesus was saying here. For someone who had a debt and couldn't pay it, there were serious, serious consequences for the one who could not pay the debt. And this is the context of what Jesus is saying here. That here is this person that comes to his master. Comes to this person to whom he owed a debt. And he couldn't pay it. And so he begged. He pleaded with him to forgive him. To have pity on him. And to be patient with him. And he said, I will pay it. Then his master was filled with pity. And here we see this parable. In this parable, really, this master represents God. It represents our creator. That as we come to God and we have a debt, we all have sinned. Every single one of us have sinned. The Bible says, Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every single one of us have sinned. And yes, sometimes we may have the idea that, well, I haven't sinned as much as they have sinned. The reality is we have all sinned. We all have a debt, if you want to say, that we cannot pay. We have all sinned against God. And here in this parable, this master represents God. And this person comes to him and begs to him and pleads for forgiveness. And the master has pity on him. And he released him. And notice what he says. And forgave his debt. 
He forgave his debt. You see, that's what happens when we come to God, our creator, the one who we have sinned against, and we come to him, and we beg him, we plead to him, we just come and we repent of our sins. We just say, God, here I am. I know I am a sinner. I have sinned against you, and I need your forgiveness. I need you to do something for me that I cannot do for myself. I have a debt that I cannot pay. You see, sin against God ultimately is a debt that we can't pay on ourselves. That's why he came, Jesus came, and he paid that debt on the cross of Calvary. He paid our debt. And all we need to do is to come to him and to ask him for forgiveness. And the Bible says that if we come to him, we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I don't know about you, but I am so, so thankful for that. Because again, I can only speak for myself, but I have so needed God's forgiveness in my life. There are many, many times that I have sinned against God. And yes, there are times that I have sinned against God when I didn't even realize I was sinning against God. All of us have sinned. And we may think, well, I'm not as bad as that person, but you think in your own life, as I in my own life, how many days, how many hours, how many months, and even how many years that maybe you lived in disregard of God. God says to have no other gods before him. That maybe we have allowed pride to take over. That we've said things we shouldn't say. That we think things we shouldn't think. And not only that we do things we shouldn't do, but that we don't do the things we should do. We've all sinned, every one of us. And the good news is that God paid the penalty, the price for our sin, a debt that we could not pay. And this is really the lesson in this parable that Jesus is teaching. As this person comes to this master and begs of him and pleads of him to forgive him, and it says this master released him and forgave his debt. But as we read on in this parable, it says, but when the man left the king, so here again, this person who had been forgiven his debt, a debt that he could not pay, it was more than he could ever pay, and he had been forgiven of that debt, totally erased, totally gone, forgiven. And it says, but when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. And he grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. Now remember, this, is, this man came from this king who had just forgiven him a debt that he couldn't pay of millions of dollars, we read in this context, of something he could never, ever pay in and of himself. And now he comes to someone else who owes him a debt, not nearly as much as the debt as he owed this king, his master. And notice his reaction. He grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. His fellow servant fell down before him, and notice this, begged him for a little more time did the same thing this other person had done before they came. Fell before him, begged him, pleaded with him. Forgive him. Be patient with me. Give me a little more time. Be patient with me and I will pay if he pleaded. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until his debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. Then the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have noticed this? Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant? So here the king says to him, Look, don't you remember how much I forgave you? Shouldn't you forgive this other person who in essence really didn't owe you nearly as much as you owed me? 
You didn't owe, they didn't owe you nearly as much as you owed me, yet I forgave you. Shouldn't you have had mercy on them? Again, that's why I said forgiveness is not based upon someone deserving it. Mercy is not getting what we do deserve. And God, thank God for his mercy. Sometimes I often say this, something like this. Sometimes I think sometimes life just isn't fair. And sometimes I think, you know, it's not fair what's happening to me. And yet there are other times that I realize this. Imagine if I always got everything I deserve. In other words, imagine if God always gave me what I really did deserve. I thank God for his mercy. I thank God that his, his mercy is new every day and great is his faithfulness because I so need his mercy. In fact, in Ephesians it says, God who is rich in mercy. And I love that. Not only that he has mercy, but he is rich in mercy. Because again, I don't know about you, but I have needed God's richness of mercy in my life. Because again, the many times and days that I have not lived for God or honored God or thought things or did things or said things or that I shouldn't do. And I thank God for his mercy. And it says, shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant? And notice this, a key here. Just as I had mercy on you. Then the anger king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. That's what my heavenly Father will do to you if you refuse to give your brothers and sisters from your heart. So here, really, Jesus teaches a parable here. And in this parable, he teaches ultimately that if, as we come to him, we all need forgiveness. And he represents the king. And we all have a debt to our creator. We have all sinned against him. Every single one of us. And all we need to do is to come to him, and he will forgive us because he is merciful. And just as he has had mercy on us and has forgiven us, so we can forgive others. So again, what is the key here? How can I forgive others? I believe the key to that, or the key to being able to forgive others, is to recognize how much we have needed forgiveness ourselves. When I realize how much I have needed forgiveness, then it makes it easier for me to forgive others. If our hearts, if my heart is bent on not being forgiving, or being, is bent on being unforgiving to others, then I truly haven't experienced the forgiveness of God. To truly forgive, hear this, to truly forgive takes us to know what it is to be forgiven. You see, sometimes why I have a hard time forgiving someone else, because again, I base it upon deserving. Well, they don't deserve my forgiveness. And then I pray by the grace of God, I need to stop and pause and reflect upon my own life. Because to truly forgive takes me to know what it is to be forgiven. You see, God has forgiven me, and just as he has forgiven me, so I ought to forgive others. Though we can truly and seriously be wronged by others, we will never be wronged to the degree we have wronged our Creator. And hear that. Because again, in this parable, as Jesus teaches here, this person, this servant, comes to his master, and he pleads with him to forgive him a debt, a debt he could not pay. And in the context of this, in the New Living Translation, it says millions of dollars. Millions of dollars, a debt he couldn't pay. There is no possible way he was able to pay that debt. And though we can truly and seriously be wronged by others, we will never be wronged to the degree we have wronged our Creator. You see, as much as someone wrongs me, as much as someone hurts me, it pales in comparison to how much I have wronged and sinned against God. Because ultimately, our sin, when we, I sin, is my sin ultimately is against Him. And when I realize how much He has forgiven me, and how many, hear me, how many times I have needed His forgiveness. I have needed God's forgiveness in my life more than three times. 
Yes, I have needed God's forgiveness in my life more than seven times. I have needed God's forgiveness in my life over and over again. And I would suggest if you're to be honest with yourself, so have you. So have you. We've all sinned. And I thank God that God doesn't just say, okay, I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to give you three chances. You just have three chances. If I only had three chances in my sinning against God, I tell you, I would have been long gone. I thank God that he forgave me more than three times. If I'm to be honest with you, I believe every day I need his forgiveness. Every day I wage a war wages against the flesh and the spirit. And I need his forgiveness daily. And I pray by the grace of God I strive to walk in his spirit and to be in his word and to meditate on his word. But at times the flesh gets in there and overtakes. And sometimes I don't acknowledge God the way I should acknowledge him. I don't worship him and I don't praise him the way I ought to praise him. Sometimes I become critical when I should be thankful. Sometimes I complain and don't trust the way I should trust. As I said, sometimes I think things I shouldn't think and say things I shouldn't say. Every day I need his forgiveness and thank God every day, hear me, every day he offers his forgiveness. In Lamentations chapter 3, verse 19, a verse that maybe is familiar to some of us, but in Lamentations chapter 3, a beautiful verse, and it's where ultimately this songwriter wrote that great hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, is taken from this Lamentations chapter 3. But in Lamentations chapter 3, Jeremiah the prophet writes these words, that his mercies are new every day. Great is his faithfulness. Hear me. God extends to you. God extends to me every day his mercy. His mercy. So no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter how many times you have sinned against God, no matter how you have sinned against God, he extends to you his forgiveness. All you need to do is to come to him and to seek his forgiveness forgiveness and he forgives and again if we're to be honest every single one of us have needed that forgiveness over and over and over again and thank God for his forgiveness and so how can I forgive someone else I can forgive someone else when I understand how much I have been forgiven I don't deserve God's forgiveness but he forgave me. Why? Because love. Love. That he loved me even when I didn't deserve his love. And that's how God wants us to be with one another. To forgive others even when we may not feel like forgiving others. Why? Because God has forgiven us. We pray in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Again, so many times I pray that prayer, but I fail to pause and really reflect upon what I'm saying, what I am praying. When I say those words, forgive us, I'm praying to God, our Creator, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And we go on and say, forgive us our trespasses, our debts, our sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us. So as we forgive those who trespass wrong us, forgive us our trespasses. So when I pray to God even to forgive him, God in essence says, just as I forgive you, so you forgive others. So how can I forgive? I can truly forgive when I understand how much I have been forgiven. So again, today as we come and we worship him, I leave this with you. I leave this with you today. First of all this, I pray that each and every one of us recognize how much we need God's forgiveness. 
You know, sometimes we can hold on to bitterness and anger, and rage and revenge of someone else and what they have done to us, and we fail to pause and reflect upon how much I need forgiveness. How much I need forgiveness. So I encourage you, I encourage myself to pause and ask yourself, how much do you truly need God's forgiveness? And if we're to be honest with ourselves, we all need His forgiveness. We all need His forgiveness. That's why, again, I had a professor that often used to say, keep short accounts with God. And I need His forgiveness every day. And so I encourage you, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, I pray that you will seek God's forgiveness. That you would recognize, first of all, that you and I need to be forgiven. We have all sinned against God. And not only have we sinned against God, but let's be real. We all, at times, sin against others. We wrong others. We all, every one of us. I know this is a bold statement, but I believe every single one of us, at times, think things about others that we shouldn't think. We shouldn't think. Whether they're impure thoughts, whether they're wrong thoughts, whether they're angry thoughts, whether they're we want revenge, whatever it is, we all at times think things about others we shouldn't think. We say things. If you're to be honest, you've said something about someone else that wasn't right. I have. We all have. We've all done things against others at times we shouldn't do. And again, not only done things we shouldn't do, we have all at times not done things we shouldn't do. And we all need forgiveness. We all need God's forgiveness, and we all need one another's forgiveness. So just as we need God's forgiveness, and we need one another's forgiveness, so may we forgive one another. How can I forgive? When I first realize I need to be forgiven. You know what in this parable, this person that came to a king and pleaded with him to forgive him of his debt, he so quickly forgot? It says immediately he went out and went to this other person that owed him a debt and took him by the throat. Took him by the throat and had him thrown into prison. You know what he so quickly, quickly forgot? Is just how much he had been forgiven. Imagine if as God's people, we truly understood how much we have been forgiven. Then how much better we would forgive one another. And I invite you, maybe you're watching today and you have never experienced God's forgiveness. Maybe you realize that yes, you have sinned, but maybe even as you watch, you say, oh, I could never be forgiven all that I've done. If only you knew what I have done. You know what? I don't need to know what you have done, but God knows what you have done. But no matter what you have done, no matter what you have done, he can forgive. And he offers forgiveness. There are no conditions to his forgiveness other than just coming, us coming to him and recognizing we have sinned against him and we need his forgiveness. And so maybe you're watching today and in your own life, you recognize you need God's forgiveness. I want to tell you on the authority of God's word, he extends to you his forgiveness. You just simply need to come to him by faith, repent of that, acknowledge that you have sinned, and if we're to be real with ourselves, we all need his forgiveness. Forgiveness is not something I pray. I just prayed some 25 years ago when I accepted Jesus Christ into my life and said, forgive me of my sins and save me. And there, that's it. I pray that as I go through life and I realize every day I need to seek his forgiveness, his cleansing. Maybe you've never experienced his forgiveness. I invite you, wherever you are, to just bring things, whatever it is, before God and say, God, I need your forgiveness. And I tell you, on the authority of his word, he forgives. Again, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and notice us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Maybe you need to seek forgiveness.
forgiveness from someone else, that you know you have wronged someone else and you need to seek their forgiveness then I encourage you to seek that forgiveness or to recognize just as you have wronged God, we have all wronged others. And so as we have sinned against God and others, so we need to forgive one another. So again, I encourage you, if we're going to have a vibrant relationship with God, and if we're going to love God and love others, then we need to learn to forgive others. And the way I can learn to forgive others is when I understand how much I've been forgiven. So as the worship team comes and closes us this morning in worship again, I just pray that no matter where you are, you just take a moment in the quietness of your own heart to just first of all acknowledge that you need forgiveness. That we need forgiveness. And there's a beautiful, beautiful thing that when I just receive God's forgiveness and to recognize that my sin, he's cleansed me from my sin, not because I deserve it, but because of his love, because of his grace, because of his mercy. And so recognize that you need forgiveness. You have needed forgiveness, you need forgiveness, and yes, should God give you breath, you will need forgiveness in the future. And so just as you have been forgiven, forgive. You say, well, you don't know what they've done to me. It doesn't matter what they've done to you. If we base forgiveness on deserving, we'd never forgive. And if God based forgiveness on deserving forgiveness, we'd never be forgiven. But thank God for his mercy. So as he's forgiven us, let's forgive others. Father God, I thank you again for your word the truth of your word, the power of your word, that your word is alive, it's powerful, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword piercing the heart asunder. God, that your word can get right to our heart. And God, I acknowledge, we acknowledge, that forgiveness can be very, very difficult thing to do. It can be a difficult thing to do. But God, I pray that I would learn to be able to forgive others when I realize how much you have forgiven me. And just as I have needed your forgiveness and I have needed forgiveness of others, so God, help me to forgive. Help us to forgive. So that we can love and treat one another the way you would have us to love and treat others. In Jesus' name.
Father God, I thank you. It's the words we just sang. Worthy is your name. And God, just as we live in a time now where we so much are in need of a vaccine, God, and I pray for the vaccine to be safe and effective and to come available to all. And God, we need to be vaccinated from this disease, this virus that's spreading, God, this COVID. But God, we all need a vaccine because we all have a disease, the disease of sin. And I thank you that your blood is that vaccine, that you give us that forgiveness. And it's available. It's effective. And it's available to all. And so God, just as we need your forgiveness, I pray that we would forgive one another. So God, help me by your grace and by your mercy to forgive others so that I might love and treat others as you would have me to love and treat them. So I pray that for each and every one of us. And I do pray for our nation. I pray, God, a cleansing, a healing upon our nation, both physically, both spiritually. I pray that there would be this vaccine that will become safe, effective, and available to all. And so, God, I pray for those even on the front lines. I pray those going through times of illness, I pray your healing upon them. And so, God, we just thank you for your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name.